Jennifer Miller's life has been incredibly hard and unpredictable since its beginning. After the girl's mother died of complications from pneumonia, when Jennifer was only five years old, she had to live with her alcoholic stepfather for about two years. Unfortunately, the man never really cared for the girl. It's hard to say how the girl's life would have turned out if it weren't for the neighbors who called the social services. Needless to say, the frightened little girl made a very sad impression on the social workers. She looked at them like a hunted animal who got caught in a trap. Meanwhile, Jennifer's stepfather was so drunk that he couldn't even talk to the social workers when they asked him to explain why the house was such a mess. Instead, the man just brushed them off as if they were some annoying flies and went into another room, swaying from side to side. Thus, the behavior of the irresponsible alcoholic sealed Jennifer's fate for years to come, forcing her to live at an orphanage. It was very difficult for the girl to adapt to living in an unfamiliar world at first. But then, thanks to the qualified help of the caretakers, little Jennifer felt like she was a part of a large and friendly family. Time flew by quickly at the orphanage, and Jennifer didn't even realize when she'd become a young adult. Saying goodbye to her beloved caretakers, the young woman entered the adult world, where she was now supposed to find her place. First of all, Jennifer solved the housing issue by receiving a small house on the outskirts of the city from an orphan relief fund. Unfortunately, the neighborhood she ended up in could hardly be called safe, but the young woman had nothing to choose from. Thus, she humbly accepted everything fate threw at her. Now that Jennifer had her own home, she could finally start looking for a job. Unfortunately, it turned out to be much harder than the young woman with no experience or any particular skills had anticipated. Going from office to office, Jennifer got rejected time and time again. And when she was already feeling desperate, fortune smiled upon her. And it came in the form of a gas station owner, Alfred Patterson. Yes, I'm actually looking for help. And a young woman as pretty as you would be perfect for the job, the owner of the gas station said with a greasy smile. Thank you, sir. I'd be very grateful for any job, Jennifer answered. The woman felt as if she was being looked over from head to toe. Alfred Patterson was a middle-aged man who never missed an opportunity with a woman and was proud to have broken at least a couple of dozens of women's hearts. Therefore, when the womanizer saw Jennifer at his office, he already knew that the interview was simply a formality. He was definitely hiring the beautiful woman. Alfred had his own reasoning behind such a decision, and it was born in his petty and immoral soul. But the unsuspecting Jennifer was very glad to get the job at the gas station, which seemed like the best place on earth to her. Two other young women and a cashier worked at the gas station together with Jennifer. Sally and Rose had been friends since school. That's why they kept to themselves and were in no hurry to accept Jennifer into their circle. On top of that, the always cheerful girlfriends were running some kind of a scam with the gas, which is why they always had extra money in their pockets. One day, Sally even plucked up the courage and offered Jennifer to join in on their scam, but the orphan woman rejected the offer. Well, that's too bad. After all, the customers wouldn't even notice it, and you'd get a couple of extra dollars. I'm sure you could use the money, Sally said, disappointed. Jennifer only smiled shyly in response and shrugged her shoulders. Even though Jennifer grew up with no parents, the thought of stealing and deceiving customers made her feel uncomfortable. Also, Jennifer was used to living modestly and was satisfied with the salary that she got at the gas station. Unfortunately, the young woman didn't know it yet, but Alfred Patterson had set his sights on her for a long time and was only waiting for an opportune moment to get what he wanted. To achieve his goal, the nasty gas station owner used every pretext to get close to Jennifer, touching her hand, hugging her at the waist, and even making dirty jokes. Mr. Patterson, I'm sorry, but your hints are making me uncomfortable, the young woman said after escaping from the groping hands of the impotent man yet again. You can try and avoid me as much as you want, but I'll still get what I want. You didn't think you'd got this job for nothing, did you? Alfred answered and smoothed his hair. Sally and Rose laughed approvingly in response to the man's comment. The woman knew their boss's preference as well and never stood up to him. Getting treated this way, Jennifer could barely fight back the tears, and it took her enormous effort to pull herself together. Barely keeping it together, until the workday was over, the woman took off her hated overalls and hurried home. 
Walking past the trash cans, Jennifer suddenly heard a strange squeak. The woman stopped and took a look around. Then, having identified the source of the sound, Jennifer lifted the empty cardboard box and saw a small kitten underneath. How did you get there, dear? The woman exclaimed and took the kitten into her arms. Realizing that the kitten would simply die without shelter and food, Jennifer took him home. After giving the tiny animal milk to drink, the woman decided to name him Thomas in honor of everyone's favorite cartoon character. Now, when Jennifer returned home from work, she was always greeted by a fluffball who loved his owner more than anything else in the world. These moments made the woman's heart sing, and even Alfred's incessant harassment no longer seemed so bad. The impotent womanizer didn't give Jennifer a pass for about a month, and then something happened that changed everything. The fact was that the gas station profits were declining in recent months, which made Alfred Patterson very angry. If it continues this way, I'll probably end up having to sell the gas station, so maybe you should start looking for new jobs, while there's still time, the owner said, referring mainly to his two favorite employees, Sally and Rose. Jennifer accidentally overheard that the potential buyer of the gas station was a serious man, who made his fortune in gold mines of Alaska. By and large, the woman didn't really care who'd be the new boss, since she was a good and honest employee and such people can adapt to any boss and new conditions easier than others. But Sally and Rose were very worried, since they realized that they might have to give up their illegal income from their unaccounted sales of gas, and this thought terrified them. Once, at the height of the working day, a cheap old Chevrolet drove into the gas station. The car was so old and looked so bad that it obviously belonged in a landfill. A frail old man was sitting behind the wheel of this relic of the past. He was wearing shabby clothes and a battered baseball cap. Yet another beggar. Now he's going to fill up a couple of liters, just to be able to get home, and that's it, Sally said sarcastically. But as it turned out a little later, the old man had no money, even for a couple liters of gas. Miss, could you help me out, please? The fact is, I forgot my wallet at home, and I don't have enough gas to go back to get it, the old man asked embarrassedly, fiddling with his cap in his hands. We know you're kind, you old beggars. You beg for food and change on the streets, and then you come and beg for gas here. That's one easy way to live your life. Get out of here before I call the police, Rose answered rudely. Really? And why would you do that? I'm just asking for a loan. I need to get to the airport. Can you understand that? My son's arriving today, and I haven't seen him for many years. Here, I have a wedding ring. You can take it. I don't need it anymore. I've been a widower for seven years, the old man said with a sob and began to pull the ring off his finger. Seeing the situation, Jennifer experienced a surge of sympathy for the old man, who was willing to humiliate himself so much for a couple of liters of gas. Stop it, sir. It's not worth it. I believe you, and I'll fill you up. No ring needed, the woman said and began to unscrew the cap off the tank of the old man's Chevrolet. Meanwhile, Sally and Rose shared a knowing look and rushed to the phone quickly to report this incident to Alfred Patterson. The impotent woman didn't even care about the fact that having filled up the man's tank, Jennifer wrote down the entire amount to be taken out of her own paycheck. But as soon as the old man left the gas station, its owner rushed in and his face was distorted with anger. Who do you think you are, Jennifer? You might have forgotten, but I'm still the owner of this gas station. I still make the decisions here, and I don't like it when someone gives away gas for free. Alfred Patterson started yelling. I understand, sir, but I made a note for this amount to come out of my paycheck. Jennifer objected quietly. In response, the owner of the gas station simply pointed the confused employee to the door, telling her that she was fired. Jennifer wiped away a tear and went to gather her things. There was no way the unfortunate orphan could have predicted such a turn of events. And now she was very upset and had been punished for her kindness. Can you imagine the surprise of the gas station employees when the same Chevrolet came back about an hour later? Only now, there was a young man in a business suit and sunglasses driving it, and the poor old man was sitting in the passenger seat. Jennifer was holding the few personal items she had at the station and was about to leave when the old man came hurrying towards her. Here, miss, here's the money. My name is Henry Matthews. And that handsome man wearing glasses is my son George. 
Thank you very much for your help. If it weren't for you, I would have been late to pick up my son. But thanks to you, I got there in time. He spent many years in Alaska, and now he's decided to come back home. The elderly man explained, holding out the money. Thank you very much. But if you don't mind, give this money to the cashier, as I no longer work at this gas station. I've just been fired. Jennifer answered with an embarrassed smile. What do you mean, fired? Who fired you? They had no right. I've already made the first payment of this gas station, and according to the agreement, after paying the entire amount, I will become the rightful owner. The old man's son asked in surprise, after accidentally overhearing the entire conversation. Mr. Matthews, is that you? How's that? I didn't even know that this man was your father. Alfred Patterson tried to justify himself, but George was angry and there was no stopping him. The businessman immediately called his manager and instructed him to make the final transfer, thus paying the full amount for the gas station and becoming the rightful owner right on the spot. Then George made an announcement that he was now the new owner of this gas station. Hearing his words, Jennifer's face lit up with a sweet smile, which made the orphan woman look even more beautiful. Alfred Patterson felt very uncomfortable and chose to leave. He understood perfectly well that from now on, he was unwelcome at this gas station. A month flew by. Left without their patron, Sally and Rose quickly learned the new rules and dropped their scam, having quickly figured out that their petty theft would no longer be tolerated. But Jennifer was the one most surprised by the changes implemented by the new owner, as he put her in charge of his entire chain of gas stations throughout the city. Moreover, George's father, Henry Matthews, often visits the woman and doesn't let anyone else fill his Chevrolet. The old man treats Jennifer like a daughter, and deep down, dreams that she'd start dating his son George. The woman always blushes to the very roots of her hair and smiles timidly in response to his suggestions which gives Mr. Matthews a reason to believe that his dreams might well come true one day.